Okay, setting up my new desk space, which is so nice. If you haven't watched the video where I made that extra little table on top for my computer, go check it out. But this has made life so much easier. I even have a modular desk to fit with my modular graphs. But uh, this just makes things so much better. I can move in between crafting spaces to just a nice computer desktop space. Uh, with little effort at all. It's fantastic. Now these ravine cliff tiles were actually going to be pretty thick so I ended up picking up some, well I actually picked it up a long time ago and have been using it here and there as you'll see in my crafts, but all of the blue XPS foam I've been using is actually two inches thick so when handling large pieces and cutting them I like to tape my fence down to the Proxon wire cutting table just to make sure it doesn't actually get pushed and I get a not straight cut. But I used one of my uh, kind of filler tiles to set the wire to three inches and then began to cut really long lengths. Uh, I was going to be cutting quite a bit of this because not only did I make these ravine uh, dungeon tiles, I also ended up making some more filler tiles that are actually twice as thick as the other filler tiles because now I have a lot more height that I have to make up for when filling out the middle spaces of the mag board. After I got all my squares cut, I used two of my filler tiles stacked on top of each other to give myself the correct height. Working off of existing pieces just makes things a whole lot easier. So one of the issues I ran into with my grass tile set that this ravine set would be working with is that I removed a bit of uh, material out from underneath them. So as you can see here, I've taken an adjustable square and I'm marking out an eighth of an inch in. And as you can see, I have removed foam on the bottom side of this that is going to show a little bit if stacked just on top of these squares as is. As you can see there's a nice gap there. So what I ended up doing was marking those off and then marking the height of each tile on the side of these new ravine tiles uh, to kind of give myself an idea of where they would need to sit flush. I didn't want them to be completely angular all the way down. So taking the hot wire table I cut some very thin zigzaggy pieces off to create a texture. If I would have done this again I probably would have made less zigzags going on in here uh, just so it wasn't quite as busy but ended up working out just fine. So then I take that measurement on the side which is the height of a regular dungeon tile and then I cut an angle up to the eighth marker that I made with the adjustable square and do the same exact kind of zigzagging pattern. This way, there's not going to be a weird gap right there from the uh, overhang of the grass tiles. The reason I made the angle only go down to about the height of a dungeon tile is because sometimes I will be stacking these uh, next to a dungeon tile and only use half the height of the ravine tile. Now, all of these tiles were going to work like the mag board or with the mag board and as a mag board tile, so I had to mark the centers on all of them. Uh, to know where to put the screw on the bottom and the magnet on the top. Now this build is actually pretty straightforward. After everything was cut, I ended up just texturing with a rolled up piece of aluminum foil. And then I used one of my favorite tools, the tweezers, to pick out pieces of it just like I did on the grass tiles and a lot of other things that I do. Uh, this just creates a lot more of a rugged looking ravine and kind of breaks up that pattern of vertical lines from the zigzagging cut made on the Proxon cutting table. Now these tiles were going to have to fit pretty flush and I really wanted them to because I ran into issues where uh, if I put one of these tiles on top of like a filler tile then uh, all of the filler is exposed, the black part. And as you can see, of these kind of more rounded, curved, or corner pieces, they're not all the same. They're very organic. Had I done this, these two projects much near each other or at the same time, I would have matched these pieces more closely. But since I didn't, I erred on the side of using the tile that goes closest to that corner's edge. And then I painted them brown on a cookie sheet to make them look like nice, delicious brownies. And then I just took some straight PVA glue and applied it to the sides. One thing I didn't show here is I actually textured in about a quarter of an inch with the roll, rolled up tin foil on the top side as well, which you see me applying glue to here. And then I applied my dirt texture. And this dirt texture was uh, shown in the grass tile video, so go check that out if you haven't to get this kind of recipe. 
but you can just dunk it in there and then kind of like gingerly scoop it onto the edge, which is what I did. My favorite method, however, is to actually scoop it from underneath and then just press it into the heaping mound on the spoon. This is a lot cleaner, a lot less dust gets out, and then you just kind of pat it with a spoon to get off the rest of the excess. I then mix some matte Mod Podge with some water until it got to the, about the consistency of milk and this was going to be dripped on all of the dirt to kind of seal it and make it, you know, stand the test of time. Uh, dripping this on actually isn't the best method. I use this method when there's a lot more material kind of stacked on top, like with the, the grass flocking and things like that. Uh, so I, I ended up actually just opting to use a brush and got it really saturated and just kind of put it on. It was much faster and a lot easier to get it to spread evenly. I did the sides and then the top, let those dry, and then I did the tops. And then I added all the screws to the bottom with some simple zinc screws, just make sure they're magnetic, really. And then using my borer tool that I matched to the size of the magnet, I used it and made an imprint on the center of the X. Uh, got a good look at it to make sure it was going to be right center before I actually made the cut. These cut very easily. It, it might look like I'm pushing pretty hard here, but I'm really not. It doesn't take much and you don't need to go very deep, just about the thickness of the magnet, maybe a hair deeper so you can get some glue over the top of the magnet to make sure it stays in there. As far as that concerned, you just pull it out with some tweezers and then you, again the glue, it's you can glue it just on the bottom if you want, but I have found sometimes uh, it likes to pull out over time. So if you do a thin layer of glue over the top of it as well, it'll actually be much more resilient and will refuse to get pulled out. One time-saving tip that I've forgotten about that I've done before and probably shown in a video before is to, to find the center, just mark the X once, take a screw, put it partially way in, and then press it up against the other one and you get nice little imprints that show your center and then you can just cut around that with whatever tool you use. My personal favorite, again, is the borer tool. And that's really it. These are the different tiles I made, One of, some on one side, corner piece and one that wraps around three sides. Now on this corner piece you can see the reason that I actually brought the dirt up onto the flat part of the top so when I place these on top like this one that goes over the edge it actually just goes right at the edge but these ones which most of my pieces look like don't go all the way to the edge and but it doesn't break up the aesthetic and the dirt is still there. But as you can see you can actually build yourself some really nice elevated terrain which is fantastic. Going vertical is a lot of fun and being able to do it in a modular way has been uh, really fun to kind of set up a bunch of encounter maps. I'm curious if anybody has anything they've done to go vertical and modular at the same time or just vertical. Uh, really curious what other people do. I've seen a lot out there that I like. I really appreciate all the comments and everything that people have left on my videos. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell. If you found any value in this, please like it and share it with your friends, maybe even somebody at your own table. There are some links in the description below to the tools that I use. And the last couple of pictures here are going to be a deconstruction of the terrain. So you can see all the new filler tiles that I use with the new ravine tiles. But thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.